In this video, we'll be learning how to acquire the jQuery library so that you can use it in your websites and web applications. You'll need to direct your attention to the Assets directory, inside of which is the subdirectory Chapter 3 Getting Started with jQuery. You'll find a HTML file in there called exercise underscore one underscore one. So go ahead and open that in your code editor. I've opened mine in Dreamweaver and then we'll run it in the browser. So there's some basic instructions here as to how to acquire the jQuery library. If you look at step three, this is where we're going to find the link to jQuery.com where the jQuery library is located. If you go ahead and click that link, it should take you to jQuery's website. On the right hand side, you should find a download jQuery link. Go ahead and click that link and you'll see that it opens up the actual jQuery library. If you're accustomed to looking at JavaScript, it may look terribly complex at this point. A part of the reason for that is its human readability has been reduced somewhat by the removal of extra characters. In other words, any character that doesn't contribute to the functionality of the code is removed. Things like uh, line breaks, space bars, multiple space bars, the tab key, and so forth. So these are characters as developers we typically add uh, just to create the file that's a little bit easier to read. So we know that curly braces, for example, sit on a line by themselves. So all of this extra characters have been removed. And so what you're looking at is what's referred to as the minified version of a JavaScript. At this point, we could select all of the code with a control A and go ahead and copy that code. You could return to your code editor and then simply paste it into a new JavaScript file. So if we asked for a new JavaScript here, or in your editor, just create a new file, and then you could go ahead and paste the code that you've just copied, which is essentially the jQuery library. You could save this into your website, and you would now have a local version of this code. However, if you look at your assets directory, you'll see we have a scripts folder already, and if you expand that, you'll see inside of it is the version of jQuery uh, that we've downloaded. So back on the website, if you went ahead and did the copy and paste, you'd want to go ahead and save this file as jQuery underscore one underscore six underscore one or whatever the exact version number was that you downloaded so that you always have a reference to the version of jQuery's library that you've used or are using in your website. So I'm going to close this without saving it because as you can see, we've already provided the jQuery library for this workshop. Now that you've acquired the jQuery library, you'll need to attach it to the web pages that are going to invoke its methods. So if you look at the code of the file that you've opened, there's a, a break underneath your title tag where you can place the script block. Now you may hear or read various websites indicating where you should put your jQuery code. And some reference uh, the head tag, but a bit later you'll see that code is going to be placed in the bottom of the page underneath or rather above the closing body tag and one of the reasons for this is because by the time that script block is read the entire DOM will have been loaded into uh, the browser before anything can start executing so for our purposes for including the library we're going to go ahead and place that underneath the closing title tag and this is just a standard script block at this point point. and then you add the source attribute and you can go ahead and browse to the folder or type in the path to that folder inside of assets where we've placed a scripts folder and we've placed the jQuery library for you. So we now have a reference to a local version of the jQuery library and we can begin invoking methods of this library. Some developers, however, prefer to work off of a version on the external site, in other words, on the jQuery site. So if you return to your Chapter 3 Getting Started with jQuery directory, you'll find a file in there called exercise underscore one underscore one underscore a. So on line 6, we still have a script block in this file. And the source attribute is now pointing to googleapis.com, which is where the jQuery library is stored. So we're still uh, grabbing a jQuery minified version. This one happens to be 1.4.2. But this is an alternative way of acquiring the library. So I still have complete access uh, to the methods using this technique. So in this video, you learned how to acquire the jQuery library, either by downloading it and saving it locally within your website, 
or by referencing it directly from Google APIs. We also learned how to use the script tag to attach that JavaScript, no matter how we acquired it, to our web page so that we can begin using the library.